Hey everybody, my name is Travis. I'm an American expat living in Singapore. On this channel, we compare life in America to life in Singapore, and today we're talking about the websites and apps that you need to know about if you ever decide to move here for any length of time. So if you're coming from America and you thought that you had an app for everything, you're wrong. Singapore has taken the use of apps, the use of a, of, a, of a mobile phone to do literally everything you need to do to a whole other level, a level that I never saw when I was living in the States. And this can be both a good thing and a bad thing. On, on the good side, obviously you have incredible convenience. There's a dozen different ways to pay for things. There's 10 different ways to order food. You know, there's really a lots of different ways to get things done. On the, on the downside though, is that it can be incredibly confusing when you move here. You don't know what payment apps are accepted at what stores. You don't know your way to navigate the different uh, ways to order food or different ways to order a cab. There's just, there, it can be very confusing when you first get here because there's so many options. So one example of, of all the options that you have can be seen in the way that you pay for public transportation. In my very first video, I talked about how wonderful it was to have a flash pay card when I first moved here. I used it to get on the MRT, I used it to get to pay for cabs, I used it to pay for meals. It was really a wonderful convenience because it was one card that did everything. But since then, some very uh, friendly Singaporeans have told me that I actually don't even need that card. I can use my phone through my Apple wallet to pay for things. I can use um, my debit card Card, which also doubles as a flash pay card, uh, which I can use at the MRT. So the, the card is actually redundant. And I didn't know that when I first moved here until you know some locals told me sort of how to use the system. So this is just an example of how, you know, there's really, really wonderful convenience here in Singapore because you have lots of options and different ways to pay for things. But also, you never quite know what thing is going to work where. Um, and that is the, the stress that, that comes with when you first get here. So the goal of this video is to show you a few apps that you're gonna find very helpful when you first move here. I've chosen these apps because I feel like they're the broadest apps. They're the apps that are gonna do the most for you when you get here. They're not gonna solve all your problems and they're certainly not gonna make things completely easy, but they are gonna be the, the kinds of apps where, you know, 75 to 80% of the time when you walk into a store, they're gonna take this payment app, they're gonna use that app. You know, 80 to 90% of the time when you need to order a car or a ride, they're gonna use this app. So this is gonna just be a really good shorthand for anyone coming to Singapore to help them get started as soon as they get off the plane. But if you're a local Singaporean and I've missed something, and I'm sure I'm going to miss something, please put those recommendations below. I've been really shocked at how many Singaporeans have been so open and helpful um, about giving recommendations and helping me. So if you have a recommendation um, or something that I forgot, please put that below so that everyone can, uh, can benefit and help everybody who watches these videos learn how to get around the city a little bit better. So I've broken these recommendations into four categories, which you can find here. So if you wanna jump around the video and go just to the information that you need, that's gonna be a great resource. Before we get into app recommendations though, I do wanna remind everybody that um, you know, I'm an Apple user, and so the apps that I'm using are the Apple versions of those apps. And one of the problems that I ran into right away was that the App Store has a location um, built into it. So there's an American App Store, just like there is a Singaporean App Store. So to get all of the Singaporean apps, you're gonna to have to switch the country in your app store. You're gonna to have to tell it that it's it's shopping in the Singaporean store now, not the American store. Because a couple of these apps I wasn't able to get until I changed over to the Singaporean app store. So let's start with the most confusing category of apps and that's payment apps. So when I tell you that Singapore has a lot of payment apps, I cannot overstate that. There are a dozen or more payment apps that you can use here, and every bank has their own payment app, and Grab, which we'll talk about later, has their own payment app, and you know all of these places are sort of launching their own ways of paying for goods. And of course, that's wonderful to have options, but the downside is, is that you end up in a situation where you have 10 apps on your phone, and you have 10 different accounts, and certain vendors only take certain apps, and so you're constantly negotiating with people about you know what do you take, what app do I have, how can I pay for this. So the first thing I would recommend that you do is set up your digital wallet. If you're an Apple user, you know, you're aware of the digital wallet, it's gonna be great and a lot of places do allow you to, to tap your phone and use your digital wallet. This is also a great way to pick up points if you're using a, a travel credit card. You can just set that up in your digital wallet and use that to pay for everything while you're in uh, Singapore. And a lot of those credit cards also don't charge international uh, fees. And so it's gonna be you know, a great way to rack up some points. It's gonna be an easy way to pay for things and it's gonna, again gonna be cardless. So you can just walk around with your phone and it's very convenient. The digital wallet is gonna be the easiest way uh, to get a digital payment up and going. The next one that I would recommend is something called PayLa. First time I saw that app, I had a good chuckle. Uh, if you don't know, in Singapore, using the word law is very common. Uh, it's used as kind of an exclamation. It doesn't really have a meaning. 
to my knowledge. It's just something where you say, you know, something law, you know, uh, camera law, whatever. But PayLaw is an app that you load money on from your bank account, and then you can use a QR code to pay. And you'll see the little QR code set up in stores all over the city that are either called, you know, PayLaw or PayNow. Um, and you can uh, just scan the QR code and it automatically does the transaction for you. So that's gonna be another really convenient way to pay and something that I've seen really all over the city. There are very few places that I've encountered that don't take uh, PayLaw or PayNow. So between that one app, PayLaw, and between your digital wallet, that really is gonna be the easiest way for you to get around the city uh, eat when you first get here. Now you'll encounter, again, there's dozens of ways to pay here in Singapore, but in my opinion, those are the two fastest ways to get up and running. So the next thing I wanna talk about is transportation. Now, the first thing you should do uh, when you move to Singapore is never, ever, ever use Apple Maps. In my opinion, uh, it's just not um, great here. It's, it's missing a bunch of information. The directions are often wrong. Apple Maps is just not great in Singapore. And that's a shame, because I like Apple Maps. But Google Maps does a pretty good job. And what I like about Google Maps is that they give you public transportation information. So just like back in America when you use Google Maps and you put in an address saying you want to go somewhere, it gives you not just car directions or walking directions, it will also give you public transportation directions. So if you want to um, you know, take a bus or take a train, it's going to give you that information and give you what lines to get on and, and how long it's going to take. And it's pretty accurate in my opinion. It'll even sometimes recommend uh, a, a car hailing service called Grab, which we'll talk about next get onto Google Maps because compared to what you're probably used to in America, Google Maps is going to be the easiest way for you to get around the city. But if you don't want to use public transportation, um, the good news is that cabs and, uh, and car hailing services are actually pretty affordable here. The app that is by far the most popular is one called Grab. Now Grab is basically like Uber on steroids. So in America we have Uber, we have Lyft are the two big ones. Um, and you know when it comes to Uber, you can not only hail a car, but you can also you know order food with Uber Eats and things like that. And Grab is like that only even more. Uh, you can order a car from them, you can order food from them just like Uber, but you can also, you know, order deliveries uh, for strange things there. If you have, you know, I, you bought a couch at uh, the mall and you need to get that home, you can actually order a service through Grab to have someone with a truck come by and get that for you and, and deliver it. You can also have deliveries sent from your house with Grab. So if you want to send something to a friend or, or whatever across town, you can have a Grab driver pick that up at your house and take it across to, to your friend across town. It really is a great app and it's much more robust than Uber is in America or, or unless Uber has updated itself, I'm not really sure. I would say though, when I first got here and I downloaded the Grab app, I could not get it to work for, for some reason. It's just my own personal experience. We got out of quarantine and I tried to get a Grab to take us to our new hotel and it just kept searching and searching and searching for uh, a car. And I thought maybe it was just, you know, maybe there were no drivers in the area, but I couldn't get a car for like a week. It just was not connecting, it wasn't working. It just kept searching and searching and searching and never actually connecting me with a driver. Now since then, I don't know if the glitch got fixed or whatever, but Grab has been working fine for me since, but um, it didn't work right away. But I'm not sure if that's normal or if I just had a bad experience. But if you'd rather get a cab and not work with someone who just, you know, they have a car and they're hiring their services out on Grab, if you want to get a more professional uh, service, I would uh, recommend an app called Comfort Delgro. These are uh, just a cab company. You see them everywhere throughout Singapore. They're very, very large as a company and their app is actually really great. You can just download their app and these are gonna be uh, not like Uber drivers. These are gonna be you know professional cab drivers. In my experience, Grab and Comfort Delgro are very comparable in price. Uh, sometimes you can actually check both. So you can sort of look on Grab for where you wanna go, look on Comfort Delgro and see where you wanna go and then just compare prices. Um, what I like about both of them is that uh, you know they give you a flat fee, right? So even if you run into a little bit of traffic or something happens, you know, the price doesn't change. So it's a great uh, way to get around town. And again, compared to, you know, major cities in America, cabs are very affordable here. So because there's a little bit of crossover, let's talk about food next. Now, unlike in America where we have things like Uber Eats, which is actually pretty expensive, food delivery in Singapore is actually quite reasonable and much more things get delivered here than in America. So it's very common to see at the malls or the restaurants, you know, lines of, of drivers outside that are just delivery drivers. They're there to pick up food and take it to someone uh, at their house or their office. Uh, and you see the drivers everywhere. They're on bicycles and they're on scooters and sometimes they're in cars too, but that's more rare. 
Um, but there's two big apps that you should know about. And the first one we've already talked about, and that is Grab. Uh, Grab is gonna have a food function, is gonna have a, a food option, and you can simply order from the menus in the Grab app, and then they bring it to you. So it's very, very easy. And so uh, really the, the Grab app is one that I would get right away as soon as you arrive. One that I actually like a little bit better is Food Panda. Um, I don't know what it is, but the Food Panda drivers, in my experience, tend to be a little faster. It also tends to be a little cheaper. Um, and again, I'm not sure if that's just my experience or if that's common among Singapore, but uh, Food Pandas, you know, I feel like they do a great job and I've never really had any issues with them. And something silly, I just kind of like the idea that their logo is a pink panda. So last but not least, let's talk about shopping. Now shopping in Singapore in person can be a lot of fun, but in my opinion, not as convenient as shopping online. Uh, often local websites here are uh, incorrect. Um, often shops are a little bit hard to find actually, and you'll even you know uh, go to a mall and have trouble finding a directory sometimes. It can just be very hard to find the stores that you're looking for. I would highly recommend using these websites. If you're from America, chances are that you shop on Amazon or you've, you've used Amazon in the past. Amazon does exist in Singapore. It's just amazon.sg and it works just like uh, you know Amazon in the States. I think the, the Amazon Prime accounts are a little bit different, the pricing is a little bit different, but in terms of you know how it works, it's, it's very, very similar. One thing to keep in mind when you're doing online shopping here is that a lot of the delivery services are outsourced. So where in America you often see like Amazon vans around urban areas where Amazon's doing their own deliveries, here you will never see those. Amazon vans are, I've never seen one anyway. Here they do outsource that and so that can cause some problems. But overall, Amazon has works pretty seamlessly and we've never not received something. But uh, if you're used to shopping at Amazon in America, the shopping experience in Amazon in Singapore is very similar. But I actually wouldn't send you there first. Amazon is just, they don't have the same presence in Singapore as they do in America. And there's some other options which might have better prices and actually more selection. So if you're looking for new goods, uh, so not, not used things, I would send you to two different places. The first is a place called Shopee. Now Shopee is very popular here. Um, it's going to be very similar to Amazon in the sense that you can find anything on Shopee. A pair of scissors or you need some batteries or if you need a camera, whatever, Shopee's gonna have all of that stuff. And so uh, I would really recommend uh, downloading their app, having an account there, because uh, in my opinion, the shipping is a little bit faster than Amazon, um, and also the experience is just a little bit more streamlined here. And the biggest competitor to Shopee is going to be a website called Lazada. Now Lazada, uh, I think, is also great. They're very similar to Shopee in the sense that they have lots of different options, and you can get everything on Lazada. Uh, my wife has uh, some masks that she likes a lot that she gets on Lazada. They have really good deals there, but uh, that's going to be another great option if you're looking to buy things online. So the last app I'll tell you about is if you're looking for used goods. Um, if you're in America you know, and you're shopping for used goods, chances are you're gonna go one of two places. You're gonna go to Facebook Marketplace, which is popular in Singapore, and you can still use Facebook Marketplace, or you're gonna go to a place called Craigslist. Now Craigslist has become, I think, over time a little bit less popular, but you can still find a lot of really good deals on Craigslist. And the Craigslist of Singapore is a, is a website called Carousel. So Carousel is a wonderful website and it's also an app you can get for your phone where people are just selling used goods all the time. I think what you'll find is that a lot of expats who are moving uh, try to sell a lot of their stuff there and a lot of people like myself can go on there and purchase those items. So uh, I've purchased quite a bit on uh, Carousel. It's by far gonna be uh, the best deals for used goods, much better than um, any of the sort of thrift stores stores and things that might be around in Singapore. And unlike Craigslist and more like Facebook, there is a rating system there. So uh, as you do business on Carousel, people can rate the experience. So there is uh, you know, a, a quality control element to that as people say, you know, hey, shopping with this person was a great experience or this person gave me something that broke the next day. There's a, there's a bit of a quality control there, but you should be on the lookout for you know, scams as always. Well, that's it. Those are my recommendations. I hope you found those helpful. Um, if, uh, again, if you're a local Singaporean or if you're an expat who's been here longer than I have and I missed some recommendations please put them below for everyone to benefit from I would love to create a space where you know everyone can get the resources that they need uh, in one place so please uh, help us out and put your comments below all right guys have a great day see you soon like and subscribe